For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Matthew 18, 20. Read, great message that yeah. you gave this past week. And Thanks, normally, son. we'd be doing this part right after the message. You'd be sweating and it'd be crazy. And, but and, snow. Uh, but snow. There was no yeah. way we could do it this week. I see what you did there. <laughs> Welcome to Going Deeper. Uh, every week we're going to dive deeper into the scripture, into conversations around the topic. And we just want to grow deeper in our faith and encourage you to do the same. There's a lot of ways you can stay up to date with our Going Deeper content, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or our website. We'd encourage you to go deeper with us. I love that you started with the scripture, dude, because that's what we... That's where we start yeah. every time, and this idea of God being uniquely present in community is, uh, it, it, this one, we could go, keep going deeper uh, for a long time and not yeah. hit the bottom. Yeah. I loved uh, how you started just by connecting the dots to the Old Testament and the Torah and all that. Yeah. And then bringing it into all scripture points and funnels to Jesus. Yeah. He's like, that That was then. That's the crux. And God was present uniquely when you were reading the Torah, but now that was all about me. Yeah. And so now I'm present very distinctively. <laughs> what, a, what a cool promise yes. um, for them and for us. Right. And you pulled from this, which I love because it's just one verse and it goes to show that you can go so deep with any mm -hmm. verse. Uh, but you pulled out these three things that community is not optional that yeah. it is not easy and that it is not limited. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to touch on all three of those. Sure. Actually. Uh, so, not optional. There's a critique when it comes to the Christian faith that it mm -hmm. can be narrow-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, you say Jesus is the only way, and we don't say it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Mm -hmm. How can that be? Isn't that ex exclusive? Mm -hmm. And so the same thing I feel like applies here. Not optional. Mm -hmm. That feels narrow-minded. Yeah. That, you know, uh, Earl Palmer uh, is a pastor in uh, the um, Pacific Northwest. And he wrote a little paper that I remember called The Good News of the Narrow Way. Mm. And, and his point was this, and I think this comes around to answer this question, is yes, in many ways, saying that it's not optional is, uh, can, you could consider that narrow. Yeah. Um, but it, the narrowness is really good news. Mm -hmm. Because it, it means that God has provided this way for us to receive all of the benefits of salvation mm -hmm. that are not completely available individually. Yeah. So you could see it as narrow mm -hmm. and constricting, or you could see it as, well, thank God right. He created us for that and in that way, because I would never get to experience this um, avenue of blessing of, of salvation without community. Yeah. So not optional, just, I mean, maybe I should have said it is optional if you don't want all the benefits. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you want it to just be lame, then sure, it, it's, it's optional. It's optional, but uh, depending on what you choose, it might not be wise. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, doesn't Tozer say something along the lines of um, the most important thing about you is what comes to mind when you think of God? When you think of God. Yeah. And uh, in, in the, how I connect the dots here is um, this is a perspective change. Mm -hmm. To think it's narrow is to say, well, you know, look at me, and I should have options, and I'm entitled to options, mm -hmm. and uh, I can do what I want when I want. Mm -hmm. Whereas what the gospel says is, no, you're helpless but not hopeless, because God made a way, and how gracious is that way, even if it's narrow. Yeah, how gracious, because it's the good news of the narrow way. It's narrow, yeah. but it's available to everybody. But it's available, yeah. Yeah, so that's a great truth. And I wouldn't want to walk a narrow path without some help. Or a good tour guide. I wouldn't do well. <laughs> I wouldn't do so hot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then easy. Uh, I think anybody who's been willing to step into community finds out pretty quickly that it's not easy. If, if you're involved in community to some degree. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it, no, let me take that back. Yes. It, the, the question mark is, why are we surprised by it? Hmm. Right? Like, some people still act surprised when 
being in relationships with other people are are hard. Mm. Like they're supposed to be really easy. And so when they're hard, <laughs> I'm go. confused. Like what's going on? But the, the, <laughs> you know, the truth is that that people are messy mm-hmm. and that relationships are hard. And it, it's at that point that you expect that and yeah. you're not thrown off by like, why are these people annoying? Well, because they're people. <laughs> And you're messy, and yeah. and so I think that the great tragedy is that the church is no different. Yes, right. Like that. So that's just society. That's just people. Mm-hmm. Um, the church has an opportunity. Followers of Jesus have an opportunity to be different. In that it's hard, and they stick, and mm-hmm. they go well. But we have a bond that's bigger than mm-hmm. that supersedes my comfort level. Mm-hmm. Um, or whether you meet my needs in some way, um, that we are connected because of Christ. And so we're able to hold together a fellowship that's not based on comfort or ease or meeting my needs. Yeah. And I wish the church was more like that and less like the, if it gets hard, I'll leave. Yeah, no, that's so true. I think uh, we forget the grace shown to us too. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one thing that's just uncommon outside the walls of the church. It's uncommon in the walls of the church a lot too. Unfortunately. But, yeah. but the thing that should separate us is not only what is above us, mm-hmm. but also the more we understand the grace we've been given, that that would change the way we interact with the not so easy parts of community. Mm-hmm. But then I also, the two thoughts I had when I listened to the message were, um, I never think I'm the reason it's not easy. I think it's everybody else. <laughs> I go, well, it's not me. Um, and then the other thing that I think of when it comes to not easy is we live in a day and age where not easy can be as simple as unfollow, unfriend, mute, and ignore. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we should talk about that because, oh my gosh. especially over the last year, I, I've known so many people to just get off of social media and it's good for the mental health. Sure. But then there's something healthy about being challenged. Mm-hmm. And and where's the line there? I guess is yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, good, great question. Because I think that that biblical that the Jesus view of vision of community gets uh, trampled on on both sides of this equation, right? Mm-hmm. That one, you can just surround yourself with people who believe exactly like you do, mm-hmm. and that doesn't accomplish much that's worth anything. On the other side is you can try to uh, you know to be this uh, blasting cap of <laughs> how uh, right you are and how wrong everybody else is, and that doesn't really accomplish mm-hmm. much. So you know, yeah, th- this idea of it's not easy and it's easier for it to not be easy than ever mm-hmm. um, creates a, a challenge, but maybe an opportunity. Yeah, for community in the church to look really different. Mm. Um, maybe you stay on social media. Are you allowed to say that as a pastor? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> either. Um, and and create conversation mm-hmm. instead of uh, conflict. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, very much. I would say probably the best advice to offer in this realm is when dealing with people who are different and disagree with you. Good questions and good listening. Um, and, and err on those 90%. <laughs> Quick to listen. And think really long about the 10%. Slow to speak, <laughs> slow to become angry. Yeah. Um, well, we don't want to make these too, too long to respect your time. But uh, last thing that you had said was it's not limited. And I just want to say I'll be preaching this Sunday. Yeah. And I'm actually going to talk about a component of um, this unlimited side of community that is forward thinking. That is not just what did Jesus say, what's good, what's in the book, um, but what's ahead of us mm-hmm. as a reason to meet in community. I love that. Yeah. What you do now matters forever. Yes, it does. And that's one reason to change what you do now. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear your message. I'm going to be preaching at, uh, at Hampstead. And I know Jono is going to be preaching at Eldersburg, and I'll be at Hereford Andrew's on Sunday at, night. Andrew's what at did I say? Eldersburg. Well, you said me, but that's all right. <laughs> It's our first week with the deeper uh, Devo discussions. Yeah. So um, uh, I just appreciate those questions, and yeah. and I hope it helps everybody go a little bit deeper. Absolutely. Don't forget you can submit questions during the message. Uh, there's going to be slides on how to do that. So, 
All right. That's all we got. See you next week. See y'all.